Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 17 in the SQL Injection module, titled SQL Injection with Filter Bypass via XML Encoding. Alright, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Select all labs. Go to the SQL injection module, which should be the first one and go down to lab number 17 titled SQL injection with filter bypass via XML encoding. All right, let's get started. This lab contains the SQL injection vulnerability in its talk check feature. The results from the query are returned in the application's response, so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables. The database contains a users table, which contains the usernames and passwords of registered users. To solve the lab, perform a SQL injection attack to retrieve the admin user's credentials, then log into their account. All right, so the target goal over here is to exploit a SQL injection in the stock check feature and then retrieve the admin's username and password from the user's table in the backend database and log into their account. We do have a hint in this lab saying, a web application firewall will block requests that contain obvious signs of a SQL injection attack. You'll need to find a way to obfuscate your malicious query to bypass this filter. We recommend using the hack verter extension to do this. Okay, let's access the lab. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. The first thing that we're gonna do is look for input vectors that could potentially talk to the backend. So when we click on view details right over here, you could see you've got a product ID input vector. This definitely talks to the backend. So let's send this one to repeater. And if we go down and click on check stock right over here, you've got a post request that takes in a bunch of XML input, which also definitely talks to the backend. So let's send this to repeater. In a real life scenario, you would test both requests, but because we know the vulnerability is in the check stock feature, we will only be testing this request in the video. So let's hit send so that the XML is properly formatted. All right, so you could see over here, it takes in the product ID and the store ID, and then in the back end, it performs some kind of SQL query that takes in the product ID and the store ID and checks the number of items that are left for this product at this store. So if this query is not properly parameterized, then what we could do is we could potentially exploit it to retrieve content from the database or in worst case scenarios, get remote code execution on the server. So let's test it for a really common SQL query. So let's say one union select null. In this query, we're just really trying to determine the number of columns that are available in the table. So let's hit send and we get attack detected. So just like the hint suggested, there's some kind of web application firewall that sees that we're trying to perform some kind of SQL injection exploit and prevents us from performing the attack. And so we need to obfuscate our input in a way that the web application firewall gets bypassed. And to do that, we're using an extension called Hackverter, 
If you do not have the extension installed on your Burp because it doesn't come installed by default, you need to go to Extender, select the BAP Store, and then search for Hat Birder over here, click on it, and then go down and click on Install. I already have it installed, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to Repeater, highlight my exploit, right click, Select extensions, hack birder, and then encode because we're trying to encode it. And you've got a bunch of options. The one that I'm going to use is hack entities. All right. So this will perform the encoding for us, which hopefully will bypass the firewall. So let's hit send and see what we get. Okay. So this is a good sign. It no longer says attack detected. And over here, it actually still outputs the number of units that are available for this product ID. Now, let's see what happens if I add another null. If I get the number of units again, that means there's two columns in the application. Let's hit send. And we get zero units. So there's definitely only one column in the query. Sorry, not the application. But there's definitely one column in the query and so we're only able to output the content in one column which means if we're trying to output the content of two columns which is the usernames and passwords columns we need to concatenate them in some way and we've learned how to do that in previous labs so let's remove this right over here go back to send to make sure it's still working it does and just write up our query over here so it would be one union select username we already know the names of the columns again we did have a lab where we learned how to output the names of uh, the columns in the database so username and then we're going to use the tilde over here to separate the content of the username column and the content of the password column so that they all appear to us in one column and we're going to say it's from the users table. All right, let's copy this entire thing, put it in here. And again, the hack verter extension will take care of obfuscating our input. So let's hit send. And here we go. So the query worked and it outputted the contents of the users table, specifically the username column and the password column. And we're looking for the admin username and password. So let's go back to our application, click on my account, copy the administrator's username, which is just administrator, and then the administrator's password, paste it in here and hit login. And we get the congratulations, you solved the lab exercise. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually. Now we usually script our exploits in Python. However, because we are using an external tool, which is the hack further extension, we won't be scripting our exploit in Python for this video. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.